Chapter 5 Monitoring Service Fabric Cluster Learning outcomes of this chapter are Setting up Application Insights Setting up Custom Rules in Application Insights and Setting up OMS Solution for Service Fabric Setting up Application Insights Before we start setting up Application Insights, I would like to go through what we can monitor with Service Fabric. We can do application monitoring, platform or cluster monitoring, performance monitoring, and health monitoring. Let's start setting up application insights. So, log into Azure Portal, create a resource group, and then click Add, and then search for application insights. Click on Create. Give it a name, Demo App Insights. Depending on type of web application you're hosting in your service fabric, select the appropriate option. We've got ASP.NET, so I'm just going to select ASP.NET for us. And then use existing resource group, appropriate location, and then hit Create. This really takes like 10 seconds to create application insights. Once it is deployed or deployment has succeeded, go to the resource and then what you will see is something like this. So make sure you copy instrumentation key because this acts like a authentication token for your service fabric cluster to talk to application insights. Copy it and then create a new service fabric cluster. So, as you know this already from previous videos, I'm going to really quickly go through this procedure again. You can treat this procedure or screen I'm going through as a benchmark for creating service fabric cluster. So, give it a name, username, password. Node type count set to one. Node type name. I'm just going to give servers. Select the smallest size possible for this demo. What I'm going to do is open ports, ATHE3, and enable reverse proxy and leave the default reverse proxy port as we have that port in the code as well where we are talking from back end to the front end so this is really important so if you click on optional settings this is where you have to put application insights instrumentation key so turn the application log storage on and then select this this is very important and then make sure dns is ticked as well and then hit ok and then select the key vault to store the certificate And then name the certificate. I'm just going to give demo set. So it's creating the certificate for us in the background. We will download this certificate. And then we should shortly see create button letting up. Now hit create. This is going to take 10 15 minutes to create the cluster for us. And soon as cluster is created, will start talking to application insights so once the cluster is getting created i would like to go through the changes needed in the source code to get application insights working and getting events locked so first and foremost you need two nuget packages at very basic level as we are using dotnet core 2 and mvc dotnet core 2 as well we need these two packages but refer to Microsoft Service Fabric monitoring documentation based on the application you are developing. So you need Microsoft.applicationinsights.servicefabric.native and Microsoft.servicefabric.diagnostics.internal. The reason we are using native is as we, we haven't changed any bootstrap stuff so there is a very good integration between App Insights and Service Fabric. We use the service fabric templates while we creating the projects 
if you are using docker for example this is separate monitoring requirements so always refer to official microsoft documentation and follow the best practices so let's go into visual studio good thing what you can do as visual studio has a very good integration with azure and application insights as well as you already know so you can go into connected services or right click and go to add usually you will see application insights listed here so you can do always do connect service and select monitoring with application insights what this means is from your local machine if you deploy a service fabric on your local machine you can directly connect it to application insights in azure so what i'm doing now is i'm selecting the application insights instance we just created and we're just updating the resource so this is really good you can catch all the errors at development stage to be honest if we do this and app insights i've already added onto this web server so you need to add this follow exactly same procedure to add this everywhere on all the services you have on service fabric project once you do this your half of your job is done now you need to do the code changes code changes are really very simple to make if you are using native service fabric programming models so in each service go to the cs file for that service and all you need is add these three lines in using so we include all the libraries needed and then in the bootstrap part add act telemetry initializer and act telemetry service fabric remoting dependency and then also include use application insights so this is it and do this in both the services so i did that in both the services in the bootstrap area same thing so this will give you some out of the box .NET integration .NET Core 2 integration and it will start logging events and telemetry data for your services all we need now is to just publish this service fabric into azure let's have a look at the cluster creation see what's happening so cluster is still getting created so i haven't got all the attributes that i need on the portal to be able to connect so let's wait so our cluster is created successfully i would just like to go through the application insights how it looks like without the application so let's have a look at the application insight resource this is pretty much what you see i'm just gonna zoom out a little bit how you will see there's a dashboard and then there is a search search is where you can search all the logs so we're gonna just do a refresh on the search it will show the last 24 hours worth of logs so you've already got traces for cluster creation so as the nodes were getting up and running it started already logging into application insights this is pretty cool you can do all sorts of things here you can do filtering on based on the type of the event you can do some group results analytics there's lots of features in application insights there's a application map smart detection live metrics analytics failures this is pretty cool tool to use in application monitoring right let's get back into visual studio and start deploying the application so i'm going to right click my application and hit publish and select the cluster i need it's throwing some error maybe i need a refresh so it should bring my new cluster into this list for some reason it is not bringing the list let's have a look demo cluster one two three it's the correct cluster i think what we need is sometimes i've noticed in visual studio the thumbprint doesn't get populated correctly for the client certificate although i've imported the certificate so it's a good lesson that come up on the video while i'm recording maybe because i recreated the cluster with the same name maybe that could be a problem 
Let's have a look. There you go. That's green now. So let's publish. Before I publish, I would like to also make sure everything is fine here. Yeah, and then here we go. Publish. So this normally takes like five minutes to, as you already know, to build, package, and deploy. Whilst the deployment is underway, I would like to go back into the application insights and go through some logs, some traces. So as you can see, you know, there are logs for platform. This is a kind of platform level monitoring. This is basically telling you if the node is down, it will log something here for that particular node. This image service partition, this information about the partitions, this information about the CPU, IP address, node names, some traffic. When your cluster is up and running, when your application is running healthy, then you will see a lot more into this log is getting streamed in. And we will hit analytics and then we'll see what happens. This is really cool. Uh, you need to a little bit learn the language here. This is similar to the OMS language, really, isn't it? So, so you have all sorts of logs here. So based on your application, based on the requirements, you need to query, create some ad hoc queries, add it into some sort of library, and then you can read on that query. So this is pretty cool. If I expand some of these logs, I get lots of information. So it's basically checking the client city. Then you know where your customers are coming from. Maybe there's a spam. Maybe there is a attack on your website. So it all gets logged. Let's have a look at the application deployment. Oh, it's failed. It's failed on the publishing. Maybe because of that certificate issue, let's republish. It's got the same problem. So the information, it's not getting refreshed properly. So what we will do before we publish, we will go into the Cloud XML. Not here, publish profiles. Here we go. Just make sure this is right. So it works. So this is lesson learned. So if you have multiple clusters in the cloud and you have multiple profiles, this is where you go and add the thumbprints. So boom, there's one more place I need to change. There you go, find value. I always keep forgetting about this. So it's a good lesson learned. Now this should work. Boom. I hope it will pass this time. Fingers crossed. So it looks like it is succeeding. It's going through. So it's finished the web one and it's doing the backend partition at the moment. While that's doing, I'm just going to go copy the endpoint for my cluster. Then we can browse our application from IE. So I'm just going to copy this. Allow access. Wait for the deployment to finish. Really, looks like it has been successfully finished. Let's go into Internet Explorer and paste. It's not copied it correctly for some reason. Let's try again. Just gonna have to remove that port number because that's management endpoint. So we are running on HTTP. Come on. So this is the application. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some stuff into this. John, check in. Yeah, and then check out. I go back into my application insights and check the logs. What happens is probably logs straight away, but it doesn't reveal into the browser. So there is like a two, three minutes lag sometimes. So bear that in mind. So I refreshed it. Now you see there are six requests. Previously, we only had traces. Now we've got the count on the traces to 76 from 60 and 
there are six requests for each for literally adding and removing the entries from the reliable dictionary so there's like a get get delete which is removal of stuff so this is pretty cool so all the request gets locked into here if there's any somebody complaining your dictionary is not getting deleted or this entry is not getting logged or this a uh, delay in response time so it's all log get logged here you will find out your bottleneck straight away 